This is your USMNT Abroad weekly update from February 1st to February 7th. All right, so Sunday. Now, listen up. We have a lot of important announcements throughout the video, so don't miss out. Some very special announcements for the channel. You guys are going to love it. So now let's go to transfer rumors and I'll talk about each player, how they did this week. And actually transfer rumors is not that much to talk about. And before we start, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, join our community. We've been growing super fast and it's all thanks to you guys. So keep it rolling, share the video. You guys know. Let's roll the episode. So for transfer rumors, there's really not that much going on because the transfer window just closed abroad. But I want to just talk real quick about Fulodin Balagoon. There are just rumors that now Swansea and Brentford from the championship, the second division of England, are interested in signing Fulodin Balagoon. He still did not renew his contract with Arsenal that expires this summer. With that said, there's nothing else to talk about on transfers. Let's go to the players. All right, so for the players, let's start with Christian Pulisic right away, our main star. On Thursday, Christian Pulisic started off at the bench for Chelsea at their 1-0 victory over Tottenham Spurs for the English Premier League. Pulisic came in the 65th minute when the game was already 1-0 for Chelsea. And for this game, Chelsea did play a three defender formation with wing backs and two strikers. So we could see Christian Pulisic play a more central role as maybe a second striker. And there has been rumors that Thomas Tuchel would want to play him as a false nine. I'm a little bit opposed to him playing a false nine. I did give an explanation on Twitter, so you guys can follow us on Twitter. My problem with false nine is they need vision. So I don't think Christian Pulisic is a player of vision of creating plays. He's more of a go at the defender player or a winger. So he's better as a winger or a second striker. So if he plays a second striker roaming around, I'm perfectly fine with that. Winger, perfectly fine. False nine, I have a couple issues with that. On Sunday, well, Christian Pulisic didn't even play this Sunday. He wasn't even at the bench. However, don't worry. The reason Christian Pulisic didn't play, he had family issues. And hopefully his family is doing just fine. Thomas Tuchel made everyone know about it after the game. So hopefully his family is just fine. There's no injuries, no reason to be worried about. Okay, now Weston McKinney. Weston McKinney started for Juve at their 2-1 victory over Inter Milan last Tuesday, February the 2nd. McKinney had another solid display and was subbed off at the 90th minute, so he pretty much played the entire match. Now on Saturday, Weston McKinney started for Juve again at their 2-0 victory over Roma. Weston McKinney was subbed off at the 65th minute for Cuadrado. He continues to be super consistent for Juve and having great matches. The match against Roma wasn't his best, but he didn't do too bad either. Okay, now Gio Reyna and a very struggling Borussia Dortmund right now. On Tuesday, Gio Reyna started off at the bench for Dortmund at their 3-2 win over Paderborn for the German Cup. Reyna came into the game at the 65th minute when the game was 2-0. The game ended 2-2 and they got the third goal on extra time getting the win for Dortmund. No, Reyna didn't score. Dortmund got the third goal at extra time. On Saturday, Reyna was back at the starting lineup for Dortmund and he was playing wide as a right winger for most of the game. I do wish they had played him more of a central role, but they have been playing him more as a winger. For this game, Dortmund lost to Freiburg 2-0 and Reyna stayed in the field for the full 90 minutes. Okay, now Serginho Dest from Barcelona. Last Wednesday, Serginho Dest started off at the bench for Barcelona at their 5-3 win over Granada for the Copa del Rey at extra time. Dest started off the bench because Sergio Roberto was back from injury. However, at the 57th minute, Roberto got injured once again and Dest came in. We don't know how long Sergio Roberto will miss time for, so I'm not going to comment on that. On Sunday, Sergio Dest was at the bench for the full 90 minutes at Barcelona's 3-2 win over Real Betis. Messi was also at the bench and came in to help them come back for the game. So maybe Coleman was just resting their players at this point, but he didn't put Sergio Dest in. And I guess his minutes have dipped lately because of the injury. They're already dipping before with Mingueza and Sergio Roberto now back. But it's okay, he's a very young player and we expect inconsistency from them. Alright, so Tyler Adams. On Wednesday, Tyler Adams started for RB Leipzig at their 4-0 win over Bochum for the German Cup. Adams played the full 90 minutes at that game. Now on Saturday, Tyler Adams started again and played 67 minutes for Leipzig at their 3-0 victory over Schalke. Okay, so Tyler Adams continues to play as a right wing back for Leipzig, even though I prefer him as a CDM, a holding midfielder. I'm okay with that as long as he continues to get minutes. All right, now we're going to talk about the center backs, and I'm going to start with John Brooks, our best center back right now. Wolfsburg played Schalke on Wednesday, and Brooks started and played a full 90 minutes at their 1-0 win for the German Cup. The funny part of the game was Brooks got a yellow card when he fouled by tripping Matthew Hoppe, the young American. Now on Saturday, Brooks played a full 90 minutes at Wolfsburg 2-0 victory over Augsburg. So that is the fifth straight clean sheet for Wolfsburg, and Brooks hasn't been a part of all of them. This is amazing. Great season for the American abroad. Great passes, great defending. Brilliant so far. 
Okay, now let's talk about Chris Richards. He finally made his debut and he got a full 90 minutes. Let's talk about it. On Sunday, Chris Richards started, made his debut for Hoffenheim and played a full 90 minutes after 3-1 loss to Eintracht Frankfurt. Something important to point out is when they were down, the manager did change the formation of three defenders by putting another striker in and he did not take Chris Richards out. He kept Richards in the game, which means he trusts Richards. One thing I know, certain things I noticed in the game was Chris Richards does need to improve a little bit his positioning, timing, things like that, which will just come with experience. The talent is there. He had great passes, great defensive stops, good pace. I liked what I saw, and he'll only continue to improve this season as he's expected to start all the way to the end of the season. Eric Palmer Brown at the Austrian League. Palmer Brown played a full 90 minutes for Austria win after 2-0 loss to RB Salzburg for the Austrian Cup where he faced his fellow American, Brendan Harrison. But we'll talk about Brendan later in the video. All right, now let's go by position. I'm gonna start the goalkeepers. And before I start it, I just wanna let you guys know, at the goalkeeper position, I have a very important announcement, so don't miss out. So let's start with Zach Steffen. Zach Steffen didn't play at all for Manchester City this week. He stayed at the bench for both games they had versus Burnley on Wednesday and Liverpool on Sunday. Now, Eton Horvath. On Wednesday, Horvath started for Club Rouge after 6-1 win over Alsa for the Belgium Cup. We finally saw him get minutes. Now on Saturday, he stayed at the bench the full 90 minutes for Club Broge at their 2-0 win over Bedevin. Okay, now CJ Dos Santos. I'm not going to talk about his games, but I just want to make an announcement. We have an interview with CJ Dos Santos coming to the channel this week. The USMNT player that got called up in December and plays for Benfica. Now let's go to the next positions. All right, so now Matt Miazga and Mark McKenzie. I'm going to talk about them together because they faced each other. So on Wednesday, Matt Miazga started for Anderlecht at their 2-0 win over RFC for the Belgium Cup. Miazga was subbed off at the 87th minute. On Sunday, Matt Miazga played a full 90 minutes at Underless 2-1 win over Genk for the Belgium League. For the same game, Mark McKenzie stayed at the bench for the full 90 minutes for Genk. All right, now Kick Piri. Yes, I used to call him Kick Pierre, but I learned how to say his name properly and I'll explain why in one second. Kick Piri started and played a full 90 minutes for 20 at their Saturday loss 3-0 to PSV. Okay, the reason I learned how to say Kick Piri is because we have an interview here with him at the channel very soon. It'll come out next week. We already recorded it. It's getting ready to be released next week. And we'll talk about if he wants to choose the USMNT or the Dutch Knight. We'll talk about all of it. So don't miss out on that video next week. Another interview for you guys. We're doing it all for you guys, all the viewers. Okay, now we've reached the fullback positions. And let's start with Anthony Robinson. On Wednesday, Robinson started as a left wingback for Fulham at their 2-0 loss to Leicester. Now on Saturday, he played more as a left back for Fulham at their 0-0 draw with West Ham. For this game, Robinson was subbed off at the 79th minute. Okay, now let's talk about Reggie Cannon from Boa Vista. Cannon was back at the starting lineup for Boa Vista at their 2-1 loss to Gil Vicente this Saturday. Cannon was subbed off at the 67th minute and Boa Vista continues to struggle at Liga NOS in the relegation zone currently. All right, now Matthew Olosunde. Olosunde started for Rotterdam at their 3-0 win over Derby County on Wednesday. He was subbed off at the 69th minute and played as a right wing back for the entire game. On Saturday, Olosunde started off at the bench at Rotterdam's 2-0 victory over Preston. He came into the game at the 66th minute to close the game. Okay, I'm trying to rush through this. Now, Shaquille Moore. Moore started on Sunday and played a full 90 minutes for Tenerife at their 1-0 win over Rayo at La Liga 2. Moore has 23 games this season for La Liga 2 and 2 assists. Okay, now Henry Wingo from Ferran Cravos. Wingo started on Wednesday for Ferran Cravos at their 4-1 win over Upjest, And he was subbed off at the 74th minute when the game was already 2-0. On Sunday, Wingo started off at the bench the full 90 minutes actually for Ferran Cravos at their 2-0 win over Fenhan Var. Ferran Cravos currently leads the league by 16 points, so complete domination. Henry Wingo will most likely be a Hungarian champion this season. Okay. Now, Brian Reynolds, not many updates on him so far. The only thing I can say, he was not registered at their Europa League squad. So that's a little of a disappointment. All right, and DeAndre Yedlin, that last week we reported that he transferred to Galatasaray in the Turkish. Yedlin made his debut this Saturday for the Turkish League's derby, Fenerbahce versus Galatasaray. Yedlin started off at the bench and came in the 82nd minute for Galatasaray's 1-0 victory. DeAndre Yedlin, welcome to the Turkish League. All right, we made it to the midfield and I'm trying to go as fast as I can for this video. So let's go to Yunus Musa. On Sunday, Yunus started off at the bench for Valencia at their 1-1 draw with Athletic Bilbao. He came in the 65th minute when the game was 1-0 for Athletic and Valencia ended up tying the game later on. Despite not getting a goal and assist, Musa had a very strong and much needed good performance. Another young player abroad that has not been as consistent as he could be this season, but I believe he'll continue to get minutes for Valencia, will continuously improve. Okay, so let's talk about Chris Durkin now. Durkin started for STVV after coming off a very hot week with two amazing performances with a goal and an assist, but not for this game. He was subbed off at halftime and STVV ended up losing to Lockerven for the Belgium Cup. That was midweek. 
Now on Saturday, there can start at the midfield for STVV at their 3-1 loss to Ostende. He did play the full 90 minutes and he did okay for this game. Not too good. All right, now Johnny Cardoso. Johnny Sock. Cardoso started off at the bench for Internacional this past Thursday at their 0-0 draw with Atletico Paranaense. Cardoso came in the 69th minute and played till the end of the game. And the game ended 0-0. So Coach Abel Braga continues to trust Johnny Cardoso, which is very important. He's been putting him in crucial moments for Internacional as they battle for the Brazilian League title with Flamengo. All right, now Owen Atasawi. Atasawi stayed at the bench the full 90 minutes this week for both of the Wolves games versus Arsenal and Leicester. I thought his versatility would start getting him minutes. He could play as a center back, defensive center mid, attacking midfielder, box to box, but that hasn't happened. Otosawi has not been playing at all for the Wolves. All right, now Brendan Arison. On Saturday, Brendan Arison came off the bench at the 66th minute for RB Salzburg at their 2-0 win over Austria wing for the Austrian Cup. He did have a clear chance to score and had a bad touch, bad finish, but it's okay as he continues to get minutes and improve with RB Salzburg. It's very important to point out that Brennan was added to the Europa League squad, so that means Jesse March plans on using him at the international competition too. I wonder if we can get Brendan Harrison to the channel for an interview. I'll let you guys know soon about it, okay? Just relax. All right, now Julian Green. On Tuesday, Julian Green started and played a full 90 minutes for Firth at their 2-0 loss to Werder Bremen for the German Cup. There goes Julian Green's three-game goal streak. On Sunday, Firth faced kickers for Bundesliga 2, and Green did not take part of this game at all, was not even at the bench. It's a shame because Kickers does have the worst defense on Bundesliga 2. He's not suspended and there's no reports of him being injured. So he'll likely play on next weekend's game versus Hamburg. Now, the new addition to the channel, Luca De La Torre. The new addition to the series, Luca De La Torre, plays for Heracles at the Dutch League. This past Friday, Luca played a full 90 minutes for Heracles at their 1-0 win over Fortuna at the Dutch League. De La Torre has 19 games in the Dutch League this season with two assists. All right, we reached the forwards and I'm going to start talking about Timothy Weyer. Weah started for Lille on Wednesday and played 81 minutes at their 3-1 win over Bordeaux. He scored the goal at the very nice counterattack that he provided. He is, continues to be extremely effective for Lille when given minutes and is very underrated in my personal opinion. On Sunday, Timothy Weah started off the bench for Lille at their 2-0 win over Nantes and Weah came in the 79th minute. Lille currently leads League 1 ahead of PSG and Olympique Lyonnais, both teams that were at the Champions League semi-finals last season. Alright, now we're going to go to Matthew Hoppy. On Wednesday, Hoppy had a matchup with his fellow American Brooks. He started and played the full 90 minutes for Schalke at their 1-0 loss to Wolfsburg for the German Cup. He had an okay game, didn't do too bad. On Saturday, he started for Schalke again at their 3-0 loss to RB Leipzig. He was subbed off at the 79th minute and didn't do much. He just tried a lot in the game, but not much was done. Obviously, it's more of a team problem than a Matthew Hoppy problem. He did renew his contract. We'll see how that goes, but he's showing sparks of talent. Okay, now Daryl DK, our brand new USMNT abroad. He was going to play this Saturday for Barnsley, but the game got canceled due to Waterlog. He did not have his debut yet. It's also been said that many Premier League teams are monitoring Daryl DK at the championship. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe he'll go to Premier League next season since he does have a 20 million transfer fee clause. Okay, Nicholas Joachini. Joachini. Oh, God. You guys love when I say this name wrong. He didn't play this weekend. He was suspended because he got a red card last week. So let's go to Josh Sargent. On Tuesday the 2nd, Josh Sargent started for Werder Bremen at their 2-0 win over Firth. He played a pretty good game, played a full 90 minutes, and was subbed off at the 92nd. So he pretty much played everything. He got an assist for Werder's second goal. On Sunday, Werder's match versus Armania Bunfield got canceled due to snow, so Sargent did not play. Okay, now Theoson Siabachu. And I don't know if I said his name right, and I truly don't care. But actually, I do care. Please tell me down below how to properly say his name. He's a player from Young Boys at the Swiss League, and he's a new addition to the channel. On Wednesday, February the 3rd, Siabachu started and played a full 90 minutes for Young Boys after a 4-1 win over Zurich. And he had a hat trick that game. Now, on Sunday, he started off the bench at their 4-2 win over Leo Same. And he did come in the 71st minute, but he didn't do much. For the current season, he has 17 games, 7 goals, and 2 assists in the Swiss League. All right, now let's talk about Jordan Morris, another new USMNT abroad. Morris started off at the bench for Swansea this Saturday at their 2-0 win over Norwich. He came in the 75th minute, and he continues to increase his minute as the games go on. Swansea does play Manchester City for the FA Cup this Wednesday, so we could see Morris face Zach Steffen in the field for that game. Okay, now Tyler Boyd, which... He is finally playing again. Boyd made his debut for Sivaspor this week at on Wednesday at their 0-0 draw with Ezemun Spur for the Turkish League. Boyd came in the 55th minute. Now on Sunday, Tyler Boyd started for Sivaspor at their 4-1 victory and he was subbed off actually at halftime. 
However, he's expected to continue starting, which is good news. Congratulations, Tyler Boyd, for finally playing again. All right, and Emmanuel Sabi was back. He was finally playing again because the league just wasn't active. Sabi started for Odense this past Wednesday for the Danish league and was back in action. They lost 1-0 to Lingby, and Sabi got a red card at the 68th minute when the game was still 0-0. All right, so they lost 1-0 probably because of him. Okay, now I'm just going to tell you the name of a couple players that were inactive this week and we do normally cover them. One of them is Joe Scali, Ariola, Sebastian Soto that played for the U23 Norwich team. Hopefully he gets some minutes with the senior squad. Conrad De La Fuente, Ulysses Yanez, and Haji Wright. So guys, thank you very much for watching everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed these updates. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share our video. I want to thank you guys very much for all the support. Don't miss out on the interviews that are coming for the channel with CJ Dos Santos, Kick Pierre. We do have a couple other players lined up that I'm not going to announce yet until they're confirmed. We'll continue to bring them on. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Have a great day.